Let us start this lecture with a thought process. Mother Earth is a biological living trust. Let us not destroy her in the name of development armed with the power of modern soulless science and technology. It is a very important thought that we must ponder about it because of uh, climate change and then other problems what we are facing. So, let us recall what we learnt in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we basically discuss about composite propellants and its uh, constituents and then later on we also find out uh, various kinds of the propellants, uh, fuel and oxidizer that can be utilized for developing composite propellants. Then we have also looked at uh, the modified double base composite propellant and later on we also looked at characteristics of a, a certain composite propellant and uh, we found that one can look at theoretical analysis to design a composite propellant according uh, to uh, certain guidelines for certain application. And uh, then we also learnt how to manufacture the composite propellant. Uh, if you recall, we uh, looked at two methods, one is casting, other is solventless extrusion process, which is uh, both of them are similar to the manufacturing process of uh, double base propellant, but there is a lot of differences you can, you could have noticed. Today, we will be uh, discussing about uh, liquid propellant. So, liquid propellant can be classified uh, on various ways. One way uh, we can classify as basically based on the ignition uh, that is the hypergolic propellant and non hypergolic propellant. Hypergolic propellant means that the propellant can be ignited without any aid of external energy or the ignition energy. And uh, therefore, one has to be little careful about hypercolic propellant, uh, particularly while handi handling and sto storing it and uh, because it can ignite itself. Whereas, non hypercolic propellant uh, is one in which one has to provide requisite ignition energy, so that initiation of combustion of the propellant can be really uh, taken place. And hypergolic propellant is again uh, divided into two categories, one is monopropellant, mono means single right and bipropellant means the two propellants will be used. And of course, the single propellant there are several kinds, some of the examples are hydrogen peroxide, hydrogen and keep in mind that this single propellant uh, can be decomposed into uh, their uh, products, particularly when it is heated or it will come in contact with the catalysts. For example, like if you look at the hydrogen peroxide can be decomposed into hydrogen and oxygen whenever it will come in contact with um, catalyst and can give rise to 1588.5 kilojoule of kg of heat and as a result uh, this heat can be transferred to the propellant product and uh, so that uh, this high temperature high pressure gas can be expanded in a nozzle to uh, produce the thrust and thus with this uh, very simple monopropellant one can achieve ISP of 147 seconds. Of course, this is a very simple system nothing really is to be required except uh, you are having a combustion chamber and nozzle and uh, that is why it is being used. But 
its application is very limited because of fact that it is having specific uh, impulse, very low specific impulse. Therefore, it is being used particularly in a space applications wherever uh, one has to use for a short time and also for uh, let us say uh, orbital reorientation of the satellites and uh, such that it can be utilized very easily. And bipropellant is a one in which both the fuel and oxidizer can be uh, used and, as, uh, and uh, this is of course, the under the comes under the hypergolic propellant and uh, some examples are UDMH that is unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrogen as a fuel and RFNA as a uh, oxidizer. RFNA means red fuming nitric acid. And uh, as the name suggests that some fuming red color fuming will be coming out of it because it will be having water and also nitrogen tetroxide to some extent and uh, therefore, of course, uh, it is uh, having little higher performance as compared to the uh, white fuming nitric acid or the simple nitric acid. And uh, these both are hypergolic in nature and it is being used in India very much. Uh, and it is can be stored easily. Of course, it is little toxic in nature and one has to be careful about using it. And nitrogen tetraoxide and nitric acid is another example of hypergolic bipropellant which is also being used and uh, this can give a moderate range of ISP or uh, rather we call it as a lower uh, range of ISP. And, uh, the non hypergolic propellant can again broadly divide two categories one is monopropellant and other is bipropellant. And uh, the monopropellant non hypergolic propellant can be again further divided into simple and composite propellant and simple propellant is one which will be containing both the fuel and oxidizer in the same molecule. Uh, if you recall uh, in the, uh, the double base solid propellant also contains the fuel and oxidizer in the same molecule in the molecule. So, therefore, it is similar to that, but it is in liquid state and one example is methyl nitrate whenever it will be ignited that will be decomposed and you can uh, really undergo the chemical reaction exothermic chemical reaction and producing certain amount of heat. And it is a very simple one non hypergolic monopropellant which is used again similar to your mono hypergolic monopropellants. And there is a also a composite, composite means uh, a mixture of oxidizer and fuel is uh, being used as a propellant. Example is nitric acid and amyl acetate can be mixed together and it can be in certain proportion it can be used as uh, a monopropellant but uh, for this one has to provide certain amount of ignition energy to initiate the combustion. And the uh, non hypergolic bipropellant is uh, being used very much, but it is, it is quite safe and also, also it will be uh, easy to control the lot of thing it can give a little higher ISP. And uh, the example is the liquid oxygen liquid hydrogen which gives the highest specific impulse. So, uh, beside this uh, like you can use also liquid oxygen and kerosene and you can use also um, other uh, propellants as a fuel and oxidizer it is being used profusely. So, we can now classify the liquid propellant based on energy. So, uh, that can be divided into three categories one is the low energy propellant, medium energy propellant and high energy propellant. Generally, energy means how much of energy will be released per unit uh, mass of the propellant, but however, it will be interesting to look at uh, instead of energy in terms of specific impulse. So, low energy uh, liquid propellant will be basically uh, one whose ISP ranges from 140 to 300 second and medium one is greater than the 300 second, but it will be less than the 400 second. That means, the medium energy liquid propellant will be 
can produce something around uh, between the uh, specific impulse uh, in the range of 300 to 400 seconds. And a high energy liquid propellant uh, must be having ISP greater than 400 seconds. So, uh, let us look at some of the examples of low energy liquid propellant. If you look at hydrogen peroxide, this is your hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen and methyl nitrate are basically uh, monopropellants which can produce a low energy um, uh, ISP uh, in the range of 140 to 30 seconds. If you uh, remember that hydrogen peroxide and hydrogen are basically hypergolic in nature whereas, methyl nitrate is non-hypergolic. This methyl nitrate is non-hypergolic propellant. propellant. And beside this, there are several other uh, propellants, uh, bipropellant, particularly aniline, RFNA, that is red uh, fuming nitric acid, gyalidine, and uh, RFNA, UDMH, and N2O4, MMH, that is uh, monomethyl hydrogen and nitrogen tetroxide, and hydrogen and nitrogen tetroxide, RP, RP means rocket propellant, and liquid. Uh, oxygen and keep in mind this is uh, basically a propellant which is known as semi cryogenic semi cryogenic propellant because liquid oxygen has to be cooled so that it will remain in the liquid state at a uh, ambient temperature and alcohol and liquid oxygen even this is also is a semi cryogenic so, other examples uh, if you look at uh, the example of medium energy uh, liquid propellant is UDMH and uh, LOO2. Uh, this again when you use the liquid oxygen is a semi cryogenic kind of things. And high energy propellant is uh, liquid oxygen and liquid fluorine. Keep in mind that uh, this can give a highest specific impulse order of something maybe 465 kind of seconds and uh, but it is not being used very much because it is difficult to handle the liquid fluorine and uh, it can be noted that liquid fluorine will act as a oxidizer uh, in this case where the liquid oxygen will be acting as a as a fuel because uh, the liquid fluorine will have higher electronegativity as compared to the liquid oxygen. This is a very interesting case you should keep in mind that uh, where the liquid oxygen is acting as a fuel. And liquid hydrogen and liquid uh, oxygen, uh, this is a widely used uh, propellants and this is all are um, basically cryogenic propellant. This is a cryogenic and the liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen can provide specific impulse around something 450 second. And we can also classify liquid propellant based on the storability. It is a very important thing that uh, we need to store uh, the propellant for a longer period without undergoing any chemical or thermal changes. And we know that uh, the rocket engines uh, liquid propellant rocket engines having lot of application, it can be applied for missile application, it can be applied for space launching vehicles, it can be uh, used for the space uh, satellites and uh, putting the satellite or also uh, taking care of attitude control of the satellite and uh, several others. So, therefore, this um, is a very important one to classify the propellant. This propellant, uh, liquid propellant can be divided into two categories based on the storability. One is the earth storable propellants and other is the space storable. Because earth storable is a uh, one which will be remaining as a liquid should not undergo the changes during the its storage. And all these uh, propellants whatever we have discussed here, these are the propellants 
which uh, can be stored very easily on the earth. Therefore, this we can say earth storable because this propellant can remain in the liquid phase at ambient temperature and pressure. So, therefore, it can be easily stored uh, on the earth. Whereas, the uh, semi cryogenic propellant one has to be provide the insulations and properly and having a vent. So, that the if some of the propellant will vaporize it can be escaped without undergoing any explosion or any other mishap. So, therefore, it is very important to look at it whereas, the space storable should have a having low boiling point and high freezing point. And, um, this is a very important aspect because uh, of fact that uh, the propellant in the space has to be stored for a longer period of time and uh, at a very uh, low temperature. And uh, beside this for the missile applications if you look at we cannot really fill the propellant tank uh, with the uh, liquid propellant immediately. Uh, because uh, you will have to store it uh, uh, such that it can be used at any instant during the any emergency of uh, external aggression. So, uh, therefore, it is important to have this uh, uh, look at the storability of the propellant. And uh, if you look at the space storability is also very important. Uh, for example, nitrogen tetraoxide is having freezing point. Uh, around 9 degree Celsius, which is quite low, but it is not suitable for space storage due to its higher freezing points. Now, question arises what will be the solution? People have used this is the mixed oxide of nitrogen, that means nitrogen tetraoxide will be mixed with the nitric oxide, and uh, if you look at this MON3, which is a mixed oxide of uh, 3 which uh, indicates that 3 percent of nitric oxide is added to 97 percent of nitrogen tetraoxide. As a result, one can get freezing point increase from minus 9 degree Celsius from the virgin 9 uh, N 2 O 4 to something minus 15 degree Celsius. And when this N O percentage increase to 25 percent, then you will get the freezing point of minus 55 degrees Celsius, which is quite lower as compared to the uh, virgin nitrogen uh, tetraoxide. Therefore, one can really manage with this and uh, keep in mind that this is a very important thing one has to classify the liquid propellant. So, hypergolic propellant uh, if you look at in the presence of catalyst uh, platinum uh, silver, ferric oxide, magnesium oxide, there are several catalysts one can use and one can look at uh, it can decompose hydrogen peroxide into hydrogen and oxygen and will be releasing certain amount of heat energy. And hydrogen when it comes in contact with iridium catalyst, it can decompose into uh, this uh, 1 moles of hydrogen can be decomposed 2 moles of ammonia and 1 moles of hydrogen and ammonia uh, will be further decomposed into hydrogen and nitrogen. So, uh, of course, uh, various kinds of catalyst can be used and then uh, one can get a temperature of 1700 Kelvin and specific impulse of 245 seconds uh, when it is operated at chamber pressure of 7 mega Pascal. And of course, uh, keep in mind that these are all hypergolic uh, propellant and then monopropellants and it is generally used for small rockets for altitude control and gas generator for turbo pump and turbines kind of things in a uh, rocket engine. So, that it is easy to handle, it is a simpler one. And uh, beside this unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrogen and RFNA that is red fuming nitric acid is being used in India and also other places due to its uh, higher performance and also it is easily available. Uh, and let us look at uh, some of the common liquid oxidizer and common liquid fuels. And as I told liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogens are being used properly uh, nowadays as a cryogenic engine 
and uh, of course, the hydrogen peroxide is being used. As I told earlier, red fuming nitric acid is basically a mixture of nitric acid, nitrogen tetroxide and certain percentage of water and it is used for missile with aniline and gyldene fuel and others also UDMH. And uh, whereas, the white fuming nitric acid is a liquid uh, oxidizer which is uh, basically little less uh, toxic in nature as it does not contain nitrogen tetroxide or very minimal may be uh, negligible percentage. And, uh, and beside this uh, the fuel if you look at saturated unsaturated hydrocarbons are being used and uh, like kerosene uh, this rocket fuel which is basically modified kerosene alcohols amines are being used and uh, tetranitromethane uh, TNM is not being very much used, but however, it is a potential uh, uh, oxidizer and beside this the boron which is the uh, hydride of the boron and which is uh, having a good qualities, but it is not really being used and as a fuel and nitrogen tetroxide which is profusely being used, it has been used in the Titan missile as a nitrogen tetroxide with a mixture of UDMH and hydrogen and the space shuttle also it is being used as a uh, nitrogen tetroxide as oxidizer and MMH as a fuel in Bicas engine of, of for PSLV and GSLV. And of course, uh, the liquid fluorine is a very exotic fuel and which can provide higher ISP along with the liquid uh, oxygen, but it has not been used very much due to its uh, corrosive in nature. And let us look at uh, the optimum performance of certain bipropellants and this is AE by A star ratio, this area ratio of the nozzle is 40, chamber pressure is 6.89 mega Pascal and back pressure is 0 mega Pascal, it is almost space. So, you can look at that liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen uh, at the oxidizer fuel ratio that is the stoichiometric will give you 3251 Kelvin and this is uh, basically theoretical values and average density is very low 0.32 hydrogen being a lighter molecule uh, right and you can get a uh, characteristics velocity of 2386, ISP will be getting 455 second. And whenever the liquid uh, methane is used in place of liquid hydrogen, of course, uh, the density has increased and the characteristic velocity has been decreased and so also the specific impulse. And that is true with the RP fuel. And uh, but whereas if you look at this is uh, liquid uh, fluorine and liquid hydrogen, when you use you will get a very higher uh, specific impulse that is 479. And of course, um, that is not being used very much, but maybe in future when good material uh, will develop, then we can use that nitrogen tetroxide. And as I told earlier, the uh, mixture of nitrogen um, hydrogen and UDMH 50 percent has been used in lunar module which can give you something 342 ISP. And also uh, nitrogen tetroxide MMH can give you also 342 and keep in mind that this has been used in as a uh, in lunar model Apollo 11 that is a combination is known as aerogyne. Even nitrogen tetroxide with MMM as UDMH is used in Apollo command and service model. And uh, of course, the liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen used for space shuttle. And these are all uh, being used very much nowadays as a cryogenic engine. Uh, with this, we will uh, stop over in the next lecture, we will be discussing about the solid propellant rocket engine. Thank you very much.